Hey guys, Eric here. So today we're gonna talk about uh, probably my only real vice uh, that I have. And um, yeah, it's caffeine. So when I was in high school, I really liked to play video games and I liked to stay up late doing it even though I had to be up really early in the morning. And I would have problems because the next day I'd be really, really tired. So that's around the time I was introduced to a wonderful drug called caffeine. And um, I drank a lot of soda. And this was back before energy drinks were really a thing. So a lot of Coke, um, a lot of Pepsi, and um, Occasionally something like Mountain Dew or something like that, but I was never really a fan of Mountain Dew um, So I was just doing it for a caffeine kick because it allowed me to stay up longer and play more video games and Not only that I, I could wake up in the morning and I could have some caffeine and I could feel okay through the rest of the school day It wasn't until around college time that I discovered coffee and coffee had slightly more caffeine than um, what, what I was getting in soda. And at this point I was working and um, coffee allowed me to be awake at work, awake and alert and handle the day and I had to have a coffee in the middle of the, or in the morning and sometimes later in the day as well. Throughout the years, my coffee intake has gone up and down, and sometimes I went long periods of time with no caffeine whatsoever and no coffee whatsoever. Um, I think now in my life, I am in a I am in a space where I'm okay with the amount of coffee I drink. I generally only have one cup a day, sometimes two cups, but generally only one cup a day. Um, but prior to about a year ago, I was going to coffee shops every day. So I was going to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or something like that to get a coffee drink. I didn't really understand that there was quality differences in coffee and I was kind of doing it for the caffeine kick still. But I was ordering these heavily flavored drinks and although they tasted good, they were loaded with sugars and um, not the best things for you. So it was around this time I started looking for a coffee drink that might be better health-wise. So less sugar, um, yeah, just not loaded with sugar. And that's when I started to discover that there were different qualities of coffee, yeah, vastly different different qualities of coffee and basically there was an infinite rabbit hole that you could go down and you could discover better and better coffee the deeper you went down um, and then I started to discover espresso um, I didn't really know much about it I just knew about the culture surrounding it and I was Inter interested in it, everything about it. I was interested in how the coffee looked, how it was in these little cups and it had the crema on top and how it just was pleasing to the eye. And people would just, I would watch people sip their espresso drinks and you know, I would just imagine the intellectual conversations they were having, even though they probably weren't having these things, these conversations. And these were all just things and musings in my head that, that I was just going over. And I was like, wow, that drink must be amazing. So I had my first espresso drink and it wasn't amazing. <laughs> But I started doing more and more research on coffee and espresso and um, coffee culture and stuff like that. And I basically discovered that it's very complicated. <laughs> and started watching a lot of James Hoffman on YouTube and discovered that coffee is even more complicated than I even realized. Um, that being said, what I did know was that I wanted, actually, before I even get to that point, before I even get to that point, I discovered Keurig, 
and I we had Keurig machines at work and I started drinking Keurig coffee um, and decided that either there was something wrong with me and maybe I wasn't a coffee person or excuse me or there was something wrong with the coffee um, and I discovered that I just wasn't a fan of Keurig coffee and that's no knock against Keurig um, I know there are a lot of people that like that coffee there are a lot of people that like that machine and it's very easy to use and it's you want a really quick cup of coffee at home it's very easy and simple to do and that's great that's for a particular type of consumer that I don't believe that I am um, anyway this led me to look at other pod machines and stuff like that and then I discovered the Nespresso Virtuo um, I wasn't an early adopter of the Nespresso type machine, so I didn't come in to the whole thing until uh, the Virtuo was already out. So I got an Nespresso machine, I actually got two Nespresso machines, and um, started making Nespresso, and occasionally I'm making milk drinks and stuff like that, milk drinks for other people. Um, my wife drinks a milk drink in the morning, and um, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was decent, but I didn't know what I was missing. And it's around this time that I discovered what I was drinking. Although it was some weird form of espresso, it wasn't actually espresso. And although the drinks were aesthetically pleasing, what the foam that was on top wasn't actually crema. Um, it was an agitated type foam that's put on there that makes the drinks look good, but it's not necessarily crema. So, started doing more and more research on espresso um, and found out basically you can get a machine for as much as you want to spend. And, um, but a better machine or a more expensive machine isn't always going to give you better coffee or better more espresso. Better more espresso? That didn't make sense. Isn't always going to give you better espresso. Basically, there are tons of factors. There's pressure, there's grind, there's all kinds of things that go into making espresso. And some of it interested me and some of it sounded way too complicated and so I needed to find a middle ground. Um, what was the middle ground? What was the middle ground that I could get where I could make really decent espresso at home um, but not have to know everything about espresso? I'm not trying to be a professional barista or anything like that. I'm just trying to make decent espresso at home. So I can make milk drinks with it, steam milk, and uh, I love latte art. I would like to get into it and try to try to learn how to make latte art. I think it's really neat. Um, anyway, so I started watching a lot of James Hoffman on YouTube, and um, he goes basically in depth, as deep as you want, into coffee culture, or yeah, coffee culture and coffee drinking and espresso drinking and and drip coffee and all different ways and mocha pots and all kinds of stuff. And and he goes way he gets way into detail and stuff like that. I really enjoy watching that stuff, but I wasn't looking for a job. In the morning, I wasn't looking for a job. I was looking for a good cup of coffee with a little bit of work because I enjoy making, or I think I enjoy making espresso. We'll find out. Um, but I wanted to end up with a decent coffee drink. And that's what brought me to this video. Since I was doing my research on this machine and before we bought it, um, I have an idea of how to use it, but I've never used it in practice, so that'll be new. I also don't know what comes in the box. So um, we'll unbox it and let's see what's in there. Uh, this box is pretty heavy. Um, let's see what we got. We have a very, very thick instruction manual. Um, warranty cards, quick start guide, very, very, very thick instruction manual. Um, warranty. Oh 
good. What else do we have? We have 54 millimeter filter baskets. Um, baskets, more than one. Oh wow, three actually. So what do we have? We have three filter baskets that it comes with. We have a single wall filters used with fresh ground coffee. Okay, so that's this. Um, oh, there's a filter, there's a fourth one, but it's in the porta filter inside. It says, I'm not missing. I am in the porta filter. Look for me in the porta filter. Okay. Uh, dual wall filters used with pre ground coffee. Filters doubles. Okay, so we have uh, this one. Oh, yeah, okay. So we get four, four, four different filters. Dual wall. I don't know if you can see that. Dual wall there. Looks like dual wall single shot. Is that what that is? Yeah, dual, dual wall single shot. Dual wall double shot. There. Um, and then what do we got here? We have, this is a single wall, single shot. And inside the porter filter. What basket do we have here? Yeah, here we go. This is the single wall double shot. Great. Okay. So. Put those baskets away. Got the baskets. Then we have the porta filter here. I've never actually held a porta filter before, so this is this is fun for me. Um, very heavy. I mean, I knew it was heavy from watching baristas work and whatnot, but this is heavy. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? We have something called. The razor it says precision dose trimming tool for 54 millimeter filter baskets. Uh, I, I don't know what this is. Let's open it. Um, oh, this is probably, I guess, for. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You put this in the porta filter to smooth out the top. Yeah, step one, tamp grinds. Insert razor into grinds, tilt porta filter, then quickly turn the razor back and forth to trim off excess grinds. Probably gonna take some practice to use this, but looking forward to that kind of stuff. All right, what else do we have? We have cleaning kit. Comes with a cleaning kit. Um, don't know what's in here, let's see. Um, mini things, brushes and whatnot, things that I don't fully understand and probably will not understand until I read the instructions. Anyway, these are cleaning, a cleaning kit for the machine. Glad it has it, as I'm sure it needs to be cleaned sometimes. Um, then we have a tamper used to flatten out the espresso puck when you are about to pull a shot little tamper here good weight uh, I don't know I don't know if this is a good tamper or a bad tamper it looks good to me we'll try it uh, okay now ooh, probably gonna have to tilt this on its side let's move some stuff and we will pull out the machine itself Pretty heavy. Maybe upside down. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's turn it right side up. Alrighty. 
This is the back of the machine. Let's pull this off. What do we have? Oh, okay. Let's turn the machine around. There she is. The beauty. Uh, easily the most elaborate and expensive coffee machine I've ever owned. Um, so yeah, open it up. Get the plastic off. Oh, look at it. It's glorious. <laughs> now I realize this is not, you know, the most advanced or most expensive espresso machine there is out there by any means, but it's new to me <laughs> and it's nice looking to me. So I'm impressed with it. Um, I hope it makes good coffee and I hope I make good coffee with it. Because if it makes bad coffee, it's probably not the machine's fault. It's probably my fault and I need to learn because I know there is a learning curve. So, what else do we have? We have this. Uh, this is what holds the bean. I guess it's called a bean hopper. And um, rubberized lid to prevent spillage and whatnot. And I'm guessing this goes right on top here. So we got the, look at the grinder right in there. The burr grinder is what they call that. And we can put the bean hopper right on top. Turn to lock. There we go, locked on top. And we can put Keep water away from grinder. That's what it says on the top. So that's good, I guess. All right, that's the machine. We'll get to that more in a second. Let's look at this. This also came in the box. And I'm guessing this is for steaming milk. Um, I have something similar for my Nespresso machine. And yes, very nice cup for steaming milk and with a nice spout so you can do some latte art once I learn how to do that as well as Breville descaler this is good removes hard water scale for descaling the machine I'm really glad it came with one of these I was about to buy one because I wasn't sure if one came with this but I'm glad it did it saves me some money so put that in the box and let's look at the machine itself Oh, it's glorious. Oh, look at that. Um, if I had to guess how much it weighs, I would say maybe about 15 pounds, but I'm not good at guessing weight, so it could be way off. Anyway, we have the bean hopper here on the top. We have the water reservoir here in the back. And there is something in the water reservoir. Let's see what that is. Um, let's open this up. I don't know if this water reservoir comes off for filling. I hope it does. Oh, it does. Great. Water reservoir comes off. Um, it looks like there is a lid on it. I can figure out how to open it. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure there's a... Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, that's how you, you can open it for filling there. Okay. What is inside it? Oh, this is like, uh, what is this? Filtration? I don't know what this is. Um, I think maybe, oh, this might be to, if you have hard water or something, or you don't have filtered water. I believe this is a water filter. Breville filter. Yeah, this is a water filter. So that's, I think if you're just gonna use tap water in here, you can use the water filter. Uh, we have a an RO system, so I don't think I'm gonna use the filter. The RO water should be good. 
and clean. Um, so that's what I'll use in here. All kinds of instructions on the back of this. That's nice. You don't always have to refer to the manual. So we'll put the water reservoir back on and let's look at the front of the machine. I'll tilt you guys down. Okay, there's a better angle of the front of the machine and we have the drip tray and it comes out, which is beautiful. Um, here's the top of the drip tray. Move this bag. Top of the drip tray. And then, what do we have here? There's this here. This is, it opens up. Empty me. Oh, I guess as this fills up, this floats up, and it says empty me. So that's how it tells you. And here it says coffee grind separator and steam and water purging reservoir. Okay. So, does this come off? It probably comes off so I can clean it or you just empty it, I don't know. There's also this down here, and this says tool storage tray. Oh, that's neat. So you can store, I guess, your cleaning kit and whatnot, just in this little drawer, or maybe even the other filters. Yeah, the filters, nice. It has a little storage tray, so you can put that back in there. Put this back on the drip tray. I believe that's how it goes. Does it go like that? Do I not know what I'm doing? Yeah, I think it just sits on top, just like that. And then this goes in here, just like that. Nice. Okay, so on the side here, we have a dial to adjust grind coarse grind or fine grind for espresso. I will be playing with that to discover what makes the best shots. Um, and what else do we have? Oh, there's a place for the tamper here. I don't know how that stays up there. It must be like a magnet or something. But tamper there, are you supposed to? I guess you can tamp it like this. Or you can just pull this out and tamp it like this. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna use. I'll see what's convenient. Um, so anyway, how I think this works is you decide how much coffee you want. Oh, grind amount. Less, more. Here's grind amount. Filter size that you are using, single or double. Um, pulling one shot or single shot. And then you put the portafilter, where do I put it? I put it here, I assume. Just like that. And it will distribute the correct amount of coffee. I hope. <laughs> uh, the correct amount of ground coffee. And then you tamp it, however you decide to do that. And then you put the portafilter here. Maybe. Put the portafilter here, lock it in place, proceed to make your espresso. Um, interesting. And then when you are done, you have your steam wand here. For milk steaming and your latte art and whatnot. Okay, let me show you guys what I'm working with and what I'm gonna do. So this is our little coffee bar here, our coffee station. And we have the Nespresso machine here. That's not going away. Uh, my wife really likes the coffee that comes out of that. And it's coffee that she can drink. There are some coffees that don't really agree with her, but there's certain pods in this that she can drink, so she wants to stick with that, and that's great. We have enough space here for the new espresso machine, but we don't have enough height here. So I'm gonna modify this a little bit. I'm gonna raise this shelf up. The top part will be used for housing pods for this, and um, the bottom part will have enough space for the new espresso machine. So that's what we're gonna do, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all set up. 
All right, guys, so I've modified the shelf. As you can see, both machines fit there pretty nicely, actually. Pretty happy with how it came out. Final setup is not final yet. I guess the setup is not final yet. Um, we're gonna try to pull a shot of espresso from the machine and see how it goes. The inaugural shot. It may or may not taste good. Alright, so I just hit the power button for the first time. We're gonna follow the quick start guide here to try and pull a shot. Let me get a cup. Alright, so I have a cup here. I have a glass see-through cup, so hopefully we can see if there's any good crema on the top. Um, let's start this process. So I've got the double shot basket inside the group head. Double, uh, double shot single walled because I'm using uh, fresh beans that I've got up there. I've got some fresh Arizona coffee up there. Um, hopefully it's good. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, step one. That's water reservoir stuff, so I already did that. We are, already filled the grinder, so we're good there. Um, pump starts, okay, press the... Oh, sorry, hold on. Press the single, there we go, here. Press the single shot button, which I guess is this button here, to flush the group head. So let's press that. Um, oh, I guess we're just supposed to press it and then press it again to kind of flush it out. Yeah, otherwise it's going to try to run a full shot through there and I don't think we're supposed to do that. Maybe we are. Someone correct can correct me down in the comments. Okay, next thing is to flush the milk steamer. Uh, press and run steam for 10 seconds. So we rotate this dial on the side here towards steam um, All right, I guess we have to wait for it to heat up there we go steam's coming out Okay, that was about 10 seconds. Okay, now we have to run hot water. My goodness. There are many noises coming from here. Anyway, I have to run hot water through the, uh, through the portafilter to preheat the basket. So we turn this knob to hot, hot water. Okay. I guess we just let that drain. There we go, to preheat the basket. And then we dry it thoroughly. Let me get something to dry it with. Alright, next, set the grind size to 5, which I did, we're going to select the filter size, it's double, alright, and then we press this in down here to start the grinding process. Okay, it has an auto stop function. So we have coffee in there. So now we're gonna tamp it down. Okay. All right, we have a puck. Now, 
Um, we already flushed the group head. So now we go in here. And we lock it in place, just like that. And then we're gonna put our cup underneath and hit the double shot button. Here goes nothing. We should see the pressure gauge here go up. Let's see what happens. Don't think that went right. Okay, so I had some difficulties with the first shot. It didn't work out so well. So we're gonna try again. Different shot, well, another shot. So what I'm doing to fix it is I'm doing a using a finer grind and I'm increasing the amount a little bit because I don't think I had enough. So that should improve it. Let's try this again. First step, preheat the portafilter. There we go. Okay. Thoroughly dry. All right, start the grind process. Okay. All right, now we're gonna put the quarter filter in, lock it into place, and attempt to pull a shot. My cup's a little big for this, but that's okay. We're gonna hit the double shot button, and let's see if we get any pressure this time. Pressure is going up. Oh, much better. Much better. Hope it doesn't get too high. We're still in the good espresso range according to the gauge here. Espresso is flowing. Okay. okay. Let's try it. We do have some nice crema on top there. Don't know if you can see that. Let's go ahead and... Should have gotten a spoon, just a I have little spoons, but we'll use a regular spoon. Let's just stir in that crema. All right, let's see what we got. Not bad. It's sweet, it's a little bit bitter, but I think I can improve on that a little bit um, as I get more experience with this machine. What I will tell you, I don't know what this coffee tastes like, so that might be part of the flavor of this coffee, but there is some sweetness. That is a really good espresso.
All right, so we set up the machine. Well, first we unboxed the machine, and then we tried to pull a few shots after I modified the shelving, and oh, Riley wants to be involved in this part. Hey, hi, not. Uh, we pulled a couple shots. First shot didn't go so well, um, but again, my first time making espresso. My second shot went much better, and uh, I actually got some decent espresso. The real test, what do you have to say? The real test will be tomorrow morning, and uh, seeing if I can pull some shots in the, uh, in the morning, and I'm gonna do uh, steam some milk and make a milk drink, and we will, uh, We'll see how that goes. So until tomorrow morning, good night. All right guys, it's the morning. It's time to see if we can make ourselves a milk drink, our morning milk drink, see how it goes. For this shot, um, even though my second shot last night was a little bit better, I think I'm gonna go a little bit less on the coffee and a little bit more coarse on the grind because the pressure was a little bit high. So we'll see how that setting goes. Uh, let's put on. All right, it's heating up. Let me go get the milk. The quick start guide has some instructions on steaming milk and getting correct texture and stuff like that. I've watched videos on it, but I just want to see what the instructions recommend. Um, texturing milk. Okay. Spin milk. <laughs> okay. Doesn't say much, but we'll see what we can do. Alright. Now, let's see if I can remember how to pull a shot. We take this, and looks like we need to dry it out. All right, porta filter. Let's press this. Just to clear that. And we have it set to double shot. We have this set. Okay, so we should just have to. We have our puck. Make sure that's properly tamped. And let's see what else. Put it right in here. Lock it. You get a cup. Let's try to pull a shot. See what kind of pressure we get this time. Good crema on top. That looks like a good shot. Smells like a good shot. Oh yeah, that's better than last night. I do think I could still go uh, a little bit less on the grind amount and that might reduce the pressure a little bit more. And uh, still, still room for improvement, but still learning. All right, now let's steam some milk. Let's 
flush this. Yeah, I think we have good texture. There we go, guys. Our first milk drink. I will clean that off in just a second. Ah, so good. It's actually really, really good. All right, so my final thoughts on the Breville Barista Express. Um, I can't say these are my final thoughts because I'm still learning how to use the machine and I'm sure that's obvious. If you see a blatant mistake that I'm making while I'm pulling shots or something like that and you're kind of a coffee expert or something like that, then go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know what I'm doing wrong because um, I'm still learning. And although I'm still learning, I'm still already impressed with the coffee that I'm pulling from this machine. It's already way better than anything I was getting from my Nespresso machine. Um, I'm kind of amazed actually because I expected it to be better but I didn't expect it to be as much better as it actually is. So that's interesting. Um, I still have a lot to learn so I'm sure I'll be getting better coffee out of there. I also think I'm going to try later on some different coffee beans because um, these are coffee beans that I don't have any reviews for and I've never, you know, no one's ever recommended them. I just saw them and purchased them. So um, I can try some coffee beans that are generally considered to be pretty good and uh, see where we go from there. Um, anyways, thank you for joining me for this video. Really appreciate it. Um, I will probably have an updated review in a month or so after I've learned a bit more about the machine and how to use it. Um, and uh, yeah, I can update exactly how I feel. But as of right now, I think it was a great purchase. Um, it's a neat little machine. I do believe uh, great coffee is capable from the machine. Consistency, I don't know about all that. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty advanced talk for me as far as... Uh, barista type stuff so I, I can't speak to consistency or anything um, maybe in my updated review I will speak to that as well anyway enjoy your coffee thank you for joining me for another problem solved